These dots represent black and white boys, with blue dots for black boys and yellow ones for white. They're coming from homes in different income ranges on the left and ending up with different incomes of their own once they're adults. This chart, together with a few others as part of a news story, shows the staggering effect of race on people's earning potential, incarceration rate, and other factors, and it does it based on data. This is a chart appreciation. The charts I'm going to talk about in this video are from a story in the New York Times from 2018 titled Extensive Data Shows Punishing Reach of Racism for Black Boys. It is based on research done at Stanford, Harvard, and the Census Bureau. The story links to a document with a summary that in turn links to a full paper and the data that the authors collected. In terms of visualization, the star of the show is of course the animated chart. It shows 10,000 dots representing black and white boys, color-coded in yellow for white and blue for black. They are grouped into five income classes on the left, according to their parents' income, and move into five classes on the right based on their own income once they've grown up. The point of this is to show their trajectories and whether they're doing better or worse than their parents and how they do relative to each other. There are actually three of these charts in the article, but they show the same data. One shows only boys from the richest households, one only from the poorest, and the last one shows all of them. I think the animation is much more effective for the first two charts, the last one gets a bit too busy. But what makes this chart so interesting is that it lets you appreciate the difference between black and white boys as they grow up and sort themselves into different income groups as adults. The dots here are just samples, they don't represent individuals that you could name. They're there to turn abstract numbers into concrete things that you can watch. This isn't really a unit chart for that reason, and there is no multiplier to tell you how many people are represented by each of those dots. And what we're seeing here is that no matter which income group we pick, white boys always do better than black boys. You can watch the yellow dots move up and the blue dots move down in all of the charts, even, and perhaps especially, in the one showing the top income group. The animation is actually kind of gratuitous, but I think it's important. It makes the chart much more interesting to look at, and it draws you in. It also helps explain how to read the data in the other charts in the article, which are relatively complicated because they use percentiles. In the animated charts, this is somewhat hidden because they only use these five income groups, which are really 20% bins, but they're given meaningful names here to be easier to understand. At the right edge of the animated chart, there are density plots. These are unusual, but they are a really interesting and very readable representation of data. And they tie in very nicely with the animation here, of course. If you just glance at them, you can see the distribution of the two colors in each, and we're actually really good at guessing the relative amounts of color in such a plot. This certainly beats stacked bars, which we're terrible at. Density plots don't use a classic visualization encoding like position or size, and they're not easy to make in a lot of software, so they're often overlooked. But they're great for comparing a small number of categories, like in this case. And while they're small, it's easy to see how the distribution changes from mostly black men in the lower income classes to mostly white men in the higher ones. And that's the actual data that's being represented here. You could show this as a bunch of bar charts, but it would be boring and not nearly as impressive or memorable as this combination of animation and density plots. Now you might wonder, why only boys? What about girls? And that's where this next chart comes in. It shows men on the left and women on the right, with the same color encoding as before. Even without explaining what the axes mean here, it's quite obvious that there is a large difference on the left, with only a small one on the right. And more than that, the lines made up by these dots are inverted between the two plots. These two charts show the same data as the animation, just in a different way. The parents' income is on the horizontal axis here, and the kids' income on the vertical one. They are expressed as percentiles, which means that they measure each person's wealth relative to the population. You make a list of every person, and then sort that list by their income. Then you can look up a particular one and see where they are within your sorted list. Let's say you have 100 people, conveniently, and the person you're looking at is number 37 in your list. That means that they are in the 37th percentile, which means their income is larger than 36% of people and smaller than 63%. The key point in this chart is the 
huge difference between white and black men. It's easy to misread here due to an optical effect, or, or illusion really, that makes us want to compare these lines perpendicular to their main direction. But we have to read them vertically, and the difference here is about 10 points, which is a lot. It means that, for example, somebody growing up in a household in the 50th percentile in terms of income, which by the way is the same thing as the median, will on average move up to the 55th percentile if they're white, but move down to the 45th if they're black. Oddly, the effect is the opposite, and it's much smaller among women on the right there. Looking at just the relative position of the two lines, you can see that black women do better than white women. Of course, the depressing thing about this chart is that no matter their race, women end up making a lot less than men, and you can see that here as well. There's quite a lot in this article, and it takes a while to digest. I want to just show one more chart here, which shows incarceration rates for men, again broken down by race, based on the same income percentile axis as before. Here, the authors of this piece have drawn a line to make the horizontal comparison easier, because otherwise, you simply would not be able to read it with any precision. The difference in incarceration rates is just devastating. The black line points out families in the top 1% for black men, and their incarceration rate is the same as for white men in the 33rd percentile. This comparison skips over two-thirds of this entire chart. And when you look at this right to left from highest incomes, which have the lowest incarceration rates, to the lower ones, not only are the rates for black men much higher, but the slope of the, the blue line is much steeper. In the lowest income percentiles, the incarceration rate is over 20%. That means one out of every five black men in that group is in jail. Racism, especially the systemic racism that these charts show, is a difficult subject, and it certainly is for me. I didn't grow up in the United States, and even if I had, I would probably have been shielded from much of its effects. I think it's difficult for people like me to fully grasp and understand the impact of this kind of racism if they haven't experienced it themselves. This article and these charts were a real eye-opener for me for that reason, and they have stuck with me since I first saw them over three years ago. The article calls this the punishing effect of racism, and it's still beyond my comprehension just how dramatic it is. I see the data, and, and I believe it, but I still don't think I fully grasp it. I've mentioned that the animation is gratuitous, but that's not a bad thing. I think it helps the viewer engage with the data, and it doesn't do any harm. The plots showing percentiles are more traditional, but they are harder to read for most people and less interesting to look at. I think the balance here between a somewhat flashy presentation and the rest is done pretty well. There are two related articles, since this one clearly raised a lot of questions. One answers reader questions, and the other one uses the same animation to show more data, including girls, but also other ethnicities. And it lets you make your own comparisons as well. I'm linking to all of those in the notes below, of course, and you should really check those out yourself. Some data is served well with a simple and straightforward representation, especially when it's about analysis. Other data needs a bit more thought and dressing up, if you will, to get the attention it deserves. I think this is one of those cases, and I think it's done very well here. Thanks for watching, and take care. Thank you.